It is time for Law or Not, where we have local legal experts help answer your questions about the law. And we have just the friends to help us do that. We have Donnie and Ken from the Advocates, a law firm. Hello, thanks for joining us. Hello, good Glad to be to here. Be okay, so we have some pretty good questions for y'all today. You ready? So okay. ready. Let's start with the first one. It says, my company makes me ride as a third person in a work box truck with only two seats. I sit in the back in an office chair, not secured, and no seat belt. Now, if I got hurt here, would my company be liable for my injuries? So this is an interesting one, and I think the answer is only to the extent that workers' compensation covers it. Oh. So workers' compensation is designed whether your employers are at fault or whether you're at fault or somebody else is. But in this case, I think it's you that's at fault. You know that you're going to get hurt. You're going to break the law and ride not in a seat belt in, in the back of a truck. Um, in, in an office chair. I know, I'm just, I'm imagining this chair. When I think of an office chair, I'm like, okay, this is on wheels. Right. This swivels. <laughs> this goes up and down. In the back of a box truck, this is just ping-ponging around. Yeah. Just so unsafe, so scary. So Not fun. you just have to protect yourself. So what do we do in this situation to make sure that the company would take responsibility if anything did happen? So arguably you could, uh, OSHA might apply if you really wanted to get legal about the whole thing mm -hmm. um, and go talk to an employment lawyer, but I might go talk to your boss. Or HR. I think mm. I would start with HR and make it very known that you don't feel safe doing this. You want to keep the job, but uh, you know, you might have to choose trade off your your health your physical health or your job and that is a tough tough situation because where I was coming at it from you know was this person might be afraid to lose their job so they're agreeing to things that maybe they know it seems they should not agree to but at the end of the day you are tasked with protecting yourself right, right. Yeah, yeah and if your employer says we'll steal some stuff you, you don't go do that mm, okay I mean and so the employer is telling you to do something that's illegal and dangerous don't do it yeah. All right, let's get into the next question. So a nearby urgent care facility keeps incorrectly billing this person for somebody who has a similar name but isn't related to them. So they said it takes about an hour to talk to their billing team and resolve it every single time. They won't do it through email or paper documentation. They say, what can I do to avoid wasting an hour of my time on a bi-monthly wow. basis? What a mess. Oh, what a mess. I feel so bad for this person because this happens to our clients all the time. Really? With medical billing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not usually that they get the person wrong, but they're mischarging, they're not billing the correct insurance, and it's just so hard to sort through it. It's so convoluted. So one, I feel for this person. If it's me, I am, the next time they call, I'm asking to talk to a supervisor immediately. I'm writing down the first name, the last name of that person. I'm writing down the time that they called. I'm at least documenting on my end if they're not going to give me written documentation um, and then the next question I would probably ask is how close is this facility because you might actually like waste less time mm. long term just going in being face to face oh. I, I think they're more likely to give you documentation and actually fix the problem if you're standing right there in front of them good idea yeah on the is. legal side what you could do is if if it's the facility calling that really limits it to maybe some of the things that Donnie was talking about, but if they've got an independent group that's in between the uh, urgent care and it's just collecting, then uh, you'd be hitting against something called the Fair Debt Collection Practice Act, Right. where if you tell somebody to stop calling you and they continue to call you, then maybe you actually can bill for your time and mm. your actual damages when they keep calling, you, you get a thousand bucks and, and then the, the lawyer that you hire to gets their fees paid. So there is some approach there, if it's somebody else, but if it's typically like we see, where it's just the, the provider just having somebody brand new, mm -hmm. I don't know. So they send you a bill, you send them a bill uh, right on back. Right? That's right. <laughs> okay, so if this does keep happening, so somebody keeps making the same mistake, should you keep track then of the instances and kind of talk to them about that aspect of it? That's what I would do because I... I I mean, we work in the legal industry, and so having a paper trail is kind of what we do. Mm -hmm. um, and if if they did send you to collections, which would be a nightmare, mm. especially because this isn't you, it affects your credit, 
But if they did, you would want to have written documentation of all the times you attempted to tell them, hey, this is not me, this, I, I don't owe this. That way, when you do get a lawyer involved, um, they'll have that to work from, and um, you're, you're probably just better set up for that fight. All right, all right, we have one more question for okay. you, all right? So it says, uh, one sunny afternoon, I noticed a passerby helping themselves to my apples. I was upset, I approached <laughs> them, asking if it's legal for them to just pick apples from my tree. They argued and stormed off. I couldn't help but wonder, can random strangers just <laughs> come onto my lawn and steal the fruits of my labor? People get real passionate about their fruit. I love this writer. <laughs> I mean, this messing with the, messing with their apples and stealing the fruits of their labor. Somebody took some time nice. to write that question well. Um, no, people can't steal from you. It doesn't matter what they're stealing. They can't do that. Is it really worth fighting them over it? Probably not. It sounds like you did the right thing. Warn them about it. I, I don't know about the arguing and fighting, but uh, I know no. I'm I'm so surprised that it got heated. <laughs> because I'm just wondering what this person, like, what ground did they have to stand on? Except for yours. Yeah. That they were <laughs> very good, very mm -hmm. good. <laughs> but what if it's like a tree? You know, you pass, you're walking on the sidewalk sometimes, and there's a tree that's, like, poking out or yes. spilling onto, you know, public space. Can, if, it's, if it's on that side of the fence, are you able to take their fruit? I don't know. You probably not, but you do it anyway. I mean, I remember <laughs> I was I was in Italy with my wife, and we our, where they make our favorite wine. We just stole some grapes from a winery and ate them. And Italy's gonna come after you. Yeah. They, yeah. 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 How were the grapes? Were they good? Oh, they were terrible. Oh, the wine's wine amazing. grapes are bad, I think. <laughs> Maybe that was karma for stealing. That's oh. right. Okay. Well, I, and I can understand, you know, just on the flip side, I have a lot of neighbors with apple trees, and a lot of those apples just end up on the ground, uh -huh, you yeah. know, so then, like, the bunnies eat them or whatever. So there's always that temptation but mm -hmm. maybe don't yeah. do it <laughs> I also wonder because like blackberries are huge I guess they're oh, everywhere yeah, everywhere so blackberries on the side of the road are those do you think oh, those are fair game those are nasty I mean minus the exhaust <laughs> and like all the emissions <laughs> yeah. on them can, can we pick them I, I feel like just like no. the city of you, Seattle you would be like, yeah, please do. Legal, but do. you don't want. But don't. <laughs> if you don't consume them, they might be dangerous to eat, but enticing. Oh, this yeah. is so great. I love this conversation. Donnie and Ken from The Advocates, thank you so much. And, and don't forget, everybody, you can submit your questions, your legal questions to us on social media, and then we'll find some answers. Just search for Studio 13 on Fox.